Hey, journeymen and journeywomen, this is here, Journey with Dr. D. Here, this week, we're going to give our second installation of the Mass Men Wear. Last week, we talked about being a stork, an athlete, and materialism. This week, we're talking about sexuality, aggressiveness, and being a joker. Sit back and enjoy the video. Hey, journeymen. Hey, journeymen and journeywomen, this is the Hero's Journey with Dr. D. And for those who do not know me, I'm Dr. D, and this is Hero's Journey. Here to inspire, to encourage, to motivate, educate, helping you get beyond your first move and creating a better mindset today. And if you find any value in this content, go ahead, help me help you so we can help others by clicking, subscribing, hitting the bell for future notifications. And what you do is you climb with me and help me as we help make a better tomorrow today. Sexuality has been a topic in a young male's life that varies, but often is very heightened and somewhat confusing. In some states, in some areas, in some cultures, it's, and mostly with young boys in general, is seen as a rite right of passage. Why, I may, why you may ask, when it's generally a state of a chemical influx, not to say that the time in a young boy's life is confusing enough without the injection of chemicals going throughout the system. It's a time of self-reflection, but reflection of what? They have lived very little and they have yet to live. It's a reflection of who they are. And actually, it's not just a reflection, but it's a, it's a del delving in deep to try to find and discover their destination in life. So, adolescence is a time where your, your hormones are raging but you don't really have control of them, especially as a young boy. Your hormones are raging and you're still trying to figure out who you are. You try to identify self and have self will be recognized to the whole world. That's confusing within itself, trying to understand who you are. But as time progresses, the boys become men and they mature to, to men. They mature physically, however, so often, emotionally, they're stuck. Not to any fault of their own, because it's a natural progression, they're growing. Unfortunately, for a lot of men, they may have men or fathers in the house, but the fathers within, the self, within themselves are stuck to a certain extent, which, which that's why they may be going through issues with their spouse or their significant other, because they never learn how to regulate themselves emotionally because they're stuck with a mask. But not only does that happen, just imagine you're progressing through life first as an adolescent and then as a young adult. But prior to being a young adult, you're taught that being a man is about your loins and what you can do in the bedroom and how many girls you can get. Often ridiculed, criticized, criticized, and actually and often made, made fun of because you're not getting the girl, so to speak. Because you're not chasing, you're saving yourself. And that's because that's not what society teaches young men. They teach young men that you have to or you need to ask a couple belts, a couple notches on your belt to prove that you got hair on your chest and that you are a man. Sex doesn't make you a man. What it does, it shows that you can procreate. <laughs> Meaning that, and sometimes, and the issue with sex prior to an age where you can really identify or appreciate the value of it and the connection it has with someone else is that premature pregnancy. Can you imagine being 14 years old and having a child, a newborn, that you have to deal with. You, I say deal with, I say it correctly, because you don't know how to deal, you don't know how, how to deal with yourself. You haven't figured out this thing called life yet because you're trying to figure out, are you still growing? Or would you ever graduate high school? And how will you feed the baby? Yet take care of a newborn child who looks to you for everything, not just financially, but emotionally. How often you have the boy or the girl who are not financially 
and not emotionally secure to pass on to a child who needs their help. They didn't ask to come, but they came because somebody had to be mad enough to have sex before they were ready. And often what happens is that the grandparent ends up raising the child while you become a, like, uncle, but a dad, because really you're just a kid, raising a kid. Sexuality, when progress even beyond that age, and just suppose that didn't happen. Suppose you, you were not, you did not impregnate a young lady, and they never became pregnant, and you grow older, believing that you sown your wild oats and you and start bragging about all your escapades with no intimacy in there. You manipulate it, you maneuver a situation with a young lady to get what you want to satisfy a temporary need that you had to be connected only to leave. And when that temporary excitement and that time leaves, so goes the filler leaving a vast void within your system because nobody ever taught you to regulate your emotions, leaving you a mask, only try to, a mask of sexuality, thinking that's the reason and that's the need. You need to be a sexual creature. We're all sexual creatures. But does sex determine me or do I determine sex? Take heed, sexual man. There's a special gift in you. And it's not just the sex. You are valuable. You are important. And you are appreciated above measure. If you take time and take the mask off, you'll realize that you may be able to find an inner peace, emotional control, self-awareness, patience, true strength, forgiveness of others, and most of all, forgiveness for yourself. Remember, you are more than a mask. Aggression is a thing that boys have. But the question is, where does the aggression come from? The aggression is stimulated from sadness, from pain, from guilt. Frustration is the building up of a certain emotion. And I stated in a video, a, a video previously about anger being a secondary emotion. But the anger initiates the aggression that comes from a sea of different sub-emotions that build up the anger. But why does the anger come in a young male child? From different reasons. Ray Lewis is an example of an individual who had, uh, he had, he had situations in life where his, his father left. His father left. And he took on the role of the aggressor. But unlike some people, he took that aggression to the playing field. And he found that aggression to pulverize his opponent. But still there is a root of the aggression. But when the aggression that a young boy keeps inside is not directed in the proper channel, or a legal channel to say that. They can be detrimental and they can be a part of the school, the jail pipeline. Very easily because they're not guided in a correct way. They're guided to be a man and man up and don't be no punk. Don't be no punk. Don't let nobody do that to you while doing something back to them. You have to, but I read somewhere that there's power in the tongue. But so often, young boys are not taught to be very fluent and articulate in their words. Not to use their words as, as a weapon that can calm the wild beast, tame the animal, or to bring down the temper of another classmate who may have issues. So the sadness and the pain of a young boy usually is funneled in a frustration that ignites anger that goes into aggression but when it's not 
distributed in a proper manner, it can be very detrimental to their growth, their welfare, and even their freedom. E even their freedom. I know a gentleman that he played football, he about six, seven, six, eight. And I asked him, why, why didn't he pursue it? Why didn't he not pursue professional uh, football? And what he told me caused me to think. He said, when I put the helmet on, I see blood. He said, all I see was rage. He appropriately found it. But to a point where he didn't see anything else but rage. So it's not only important to funnel the frustration and that anger and distribute it in an aggressive in the aggressive sport to be effective, but it's very important to find the root from which it came. Ray Lewis took a ride, according to Lewis How uh, Howes, he took a ride with his father. And his father said, it's coming, son. I want to take you and see this guy. And he never told him who the guy was. He told him that we're going to take a ride to see this guy. And they drove by an hour, and then they saw the guy. Opened up the door, the guy opened up the door. He said, Ray, this is your, your granddad. Ray had no clue. And then just Ray just sat down and just watched his father and his grandfather communicate with each other. And the thing that Ray heard startled him. He heard his father ask his grandfather, why did you leave me? And the thing clicked on his head because his father's, Ray's father's 20 years older than him. And his grandfather's 20 years older than his father. And he realized that it's a generational thing. Nobody ever taught them to stay. Nobody ever taught them to recollect the emotion that they don't run. It was taught. It was an inborn. And he determined that he was going to stop that train from happening again. But he realized that's where his rage came from. His rage came from, he funneled his rage into the football field. But how many young boys grow up and do not have a funnel? And even if they do have a funnel, when the sport is over, they end up in jail. When they don't have that tool to utilize, then they're a mess. They end up in jail, they do drugs because they're trying to mask the pain. Hence, mask the pain. The aggression is funneled through aggressive sports or it's snuffed down and it's capped with drugs and alcohol. Aggression, that's the mask that most men put on growing up when they have not learned how to regulate their emotion. Then they're a mess. They're in jail, they do drugs because they're trying to mask the pain. Hence, Mask the pain. The aggression is funneled through aggressive sports or it's snuffed now and it's capped with drugs and alcohol. Aggression. That's the mask that most men put on growing up when they have not learned how to regulate their emotions. Take heed, aggressive man. You are a gift and there's so much to celebrate about you. You are more than aggression. You are so much more. If you dig deep, you'll find the essence of your true being. If you just take off your mask, you'll be able to find inner peace, emotional control, responsiveness versus reactiveness, self-awareness, forgiveness of others, and yourself, patience, and true strength. Remember, aggression doesn't control you, it's only a mask. The Joker. It's alright to laugh or to 
or to have jokes or any to things to that certain extent. But how often do you do you joke a little bit too much? The sarcastic which is overwhelming? Or you just willing not to address the pain you have inside? The joke is usually developed when a person is trying to hide from the guilt or the shame or the sadness that they have within themselves. It's a projection of their emotion on emotion onto a situation or even somebody else. It is projection onto something else that may be funny. Some situation may be funny. And it's about making everybody else laugh. But there's no laugh inside of yourself. A perfect example is that Robin Williams one of the funniest men I've ever seen at, at work. Not rehearsed humor, just off the cuff humor. And it's been said that Robin Robin Williams has been many many occasions just making others laugh, giving other people joy, and lightening their mood. When Christopher Reeves was in the hospital after he just got paralyzed, Robin Williams snuck in and and snuck into the hospital and told Rip, and he made a joke and said, okay, are you ready for your rectum exam for Christopher Reeves? To try to lighten his mood. He was so busy trying to make other people smile when he never had a smile for himself. He dealt with cocaine and alcohol abuse. He even spent the time where he, he stopped doing it. But the pain got so overwhelming, he... St- he restarted the abuse. But in the meantime, he still was making everybody else laugh. But he just had any la- laughs left for himself. Can we stop being a joker and regulate and learn how to regulate our emotions for our well being and for a longer life? Take heed, Joker man. A laugh is good sometime, but not to hide the true person inside. Remember, there is a gift in you. You are the gift. And you are important and very valuable. So take the mask off. So me may be able to see deeper relationships, worthiness, healing, connection. Feeling enough and a rich experience with others. Remember, you are much more than a laugh. Take the mask off. Journeymen, journey women, that's the end of this video. Hope you got received something from um, this content that I put out. And also, if you'd like to uh, get a little bit more, look up above and click the Purpose Driven series and my Emotion series. I promise you there's something in there for you. And if you need a little bit more one-on-one time for me to help you get beyond your first move, click down below and hit my website and we can talk further about how can I, how I can assist you. And also, if you don't remember anything else, remember this. Every day you get up vertical, make it your goal to life to move forward and not backwards because you are important. And this is a hero's journey with Dr. D. Out!